Hello, I'm Dave Ortega from Somerville Media Center, and I'm happy to be joined with Stephanie Scherf, who is the Executive Director of the Center for the Arts at the Armory. Welcome, Stephanie. Thank you, Dave. Great to be here. Yeah, it's great to, to have you on one of our, our business updates. Uh, and we're going to be talking specifically about uh, a new cafe endeavor uh, at, the Art, at the Center for the Arts of the Armory. Uh, it's called Rooted. Um, it opened on July 21st. And uh, there's a lot to like about this. It's a, it's a farm stand that features a lot of local farms and vendors um, that have worked with uh, CAA in the much celebrated Somerville Winners Farmers Market. Um, so you're bringing a lot of those goods in year round. Um, and that's exciting. Uh, so why don't, why don't we start off with um, talking about like how this idea came about. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Well, um, as of March 13th of this year, 2020, pretty much everything at the Armory ground to a halt with COVID-19. Um, as I think most uh, villains, if I can say that, no, no. Um, the, the arts at the Armory, we have our cafe and then we have the main performance hall and we host over 750 events um, each year. So arts and cultural events, we do a lot of markets as well. Um, so, you know, we, have not been able to do those events um, since March 13th, and we're not sure when we're going to be able to get back to them. So for me, it was a question of how can we remain viable? How can we continue to serve the community and uh, stay afloat? So um, Rooted was actually my brainchild. And, you know, in some ways, looking at the, the local economy and Grocery is, seems to be doing well. People still need to buy food to eat. People are still, you know, enjoying and appreciated, appreciating, excuse me, um, organic and local foods, um, you know, delicious food. So how can we leverage some of the, um, the relationships that we have with our Somerville Winter Farmers Market vendors? Um, and of course, I think most folks know that our um, winter farmers market takes place in the hall from December through April and is really popular you know over a thousand people come to that um, every Saturday and um, love those products and so we decided um, that we were going to come up with a new new concept um, which is rooted and the concept really revolves around um, sourcing these local products many of them are products that come from Somerville Winter Farmers Market vendors. Um, and I actually created the menu um, using those products. So I said, okay, what products do I wanna work with and then build a menu around that. And then we created a marketplace. Um, so, you know, folks can come in, they can order food um, to go or to sit out on our outdoor patio that we just put up. Um, we now have online ordering as well. Um, and then when they come in, there are these items. We have fresh produce. Um, many, much of our produce is from a local farm, Red Fire Farm. It's all organic. And then we have pantry items. So for example, pancake mix and olive oil and um, uh, granola from the roasted granola, which is over in Arlington. So I could go on and on and I'll probably be able to highlight maybe some of those products that we carry. But um, so far, the response has been good. You know, prior to opening, we did send out a survey to our community through our mailing list and tried to get input on what people would be looking for, looking to buy. Um, and so, you know, it's um, very, it feels very pedestrian. A lot of folks in the neighborhood are coming by, checking out what we have, picking up groceries, um, maybe for dinner that night, um, getting their coffee. And so it's, um, so far it's off to a good start, but we do, we do want more um, customers to come in and um, to, to support us. We're through, through purchases, per, uh, customers are actually doing a lot of things at once. They are supporting us by letting a, our nonprofit arts organization stay afloat um, and helping us cover our operational costs. They're also supporting um, local vendors and farmers um, and farms um, through their purchases. And they're also getting some great, wonderful products for themselves that are healthy, local, 
and nutritious. Do people need to call ahead? Uh, can people just come down? How is that working? Well, you know, we did have to submit a plan to the city in terms of the COVID guidelines that we were going to be following. And to answer your question, folks can call ahead if they want to place their order. They can call us at 617-718-2192. That, that number is on our website. Um, and, you know, everything is um, made to order. So if someone doesn't want to wait for, you know, 10 or so minutes to get something prepared, it's good to call ahead. Um, and in the store, you know, we have um, pathways marked for people um, to walk. Everybody, we have kind of the guidelines posted um, prior to anybody actually coming in the building. Everybody needs to wear a mask. Um, we have hand sanitizer available. Social distance needs to be maintained. If anybody is feeling ill, they need to stay home. Um, so, and then we are, you know, we have staff um, regularly wiping everything down, you know, any things that has been touched by, by people. So we are, um, you know, doing a, a strict job of maintaining those um, guidelines. And um, yeah, you know, and it's, it hasn't, it's been a good flow. I mean, there's never too many people in um, at Rooted at one time, um, which is good. It kind of is a steady flow throughout the day. And um, yeah, so it's in some ways, it's great if you want to avoid a crowded, crowded market, um, come on by to Rooted. Excellent. Um, and one thing that I did notice in your press release was that uh, you are accepting SNAP benefits. Yeah, we are actually, we should be um, up and ready to do that shortly. It's a little bit of an administrative procedure. We have SNAP for the summer winter farmers market um, and so we are that should be up and ready um, by September September 1st so that is really important to us um, that we remain accessible um, to the entire community and um, you know it's also about food justice and making sure that um, local organic high quality produce and food is available to everybody regardless of your income level I'm curious about the menu development. How did, you know, how, can you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Well, this has been a fun project for me, interesting and challenging. Um, you know, my career has been um, in, in the arts, really in arts for so, social change um, programs and, and, and projects. Um, you know, so I've been doing that for 20 plus years and never thought I would be um, opening a cafe or a, a grocery store, but this has been a new and interesting challenge and one actually that I've enjoyed. Um, I do consider myself a bit of a foodie. <laughs> I do like shopping at farmer's markets and I do like um, also um, food really as a portal to culture. And um, so that's something that I very much enjoy as well. And that's, I think, featured in a lot of our products, whether you from Samira's Homemade to we have Fork on a Road, which um, is uh, a local company developed by Suman Shah. And um, she says that she they're basically meal kits and um, she features, um, she calls it her um, immigrant pantry. She is Bengali and um, so she has uh, like a spicy lentil two, two ways uh, meal kit and so we have, we carry her um, chai tea and so it's really, um, you know, just a great, like I said, portal to, to the world. But so I, um, you know, taking all of that and kind of my background and I said, okay, like what, what products do we have to work with? And, and, you know, to be honest, a lot of the things are things that I myself enjoy. Um, I um, got to know a lot of the products just, um, you know, through the Somerville winter farmers market. So for example, like Boston smoked fish. Um, I love their smoked salmon. And like, I, you know, our, one of our menu items is the rooted salad. And that is like greens, um, basil, cues, um, sweet pecans. And um, so that's tossed. And then we have as an option, you can put the smoked salmon as like an add on on top as like a protein and it is delicious. Um, they also carry um, bluefish um, pate. So one of our um, sandwiches is a uh, just that pate smeared on toasted sour bread. It's like an open face sandwich. And that is also, I mean, it's so simple, but it's so delicious because the products really speak for themselves. So that's kind of, you know, one by one, I was like, let's see what we have to work with and how do we, um, you know, in invent a menu that, um, 
you know, works for also for our staff that's simple enough for us to execute consistently and, um, but is also delicious and appealing to, to our customers, so. And do you have plans for the, for the menu to change as things go in and out of season? We'll see, you know, um, I, um, <laughs> I am looking okay. forward to, we just um, are about to bring on a new um, staff member on board. Um, Jess Bloomer was our farmer's market manager for the past three years, and she's now moved to California. And so we had to um, hire her replacement. And we adapted that job a little bit um, so that that person could also advise and work with us um, at Rooted, because none of us on staff are what I would call like really an expert on um, you know local foods and farm products so this this person that's going to be coming on board with us shortly um, will will have that knowledge and that expertise so I think I will really be um, looking to her to um, to guide us and you know to say hey you know um, we should do something um, with cranberry beans because they are, you know, in season right now. And, you know, what menu item could we um, create? But, you know, right now we're just trying to get a really solid start with um, what we are offering and kind of really get that down. And then, um, you know, I'm hopeful with this new staff member that um, she can really help take the lead in, you know, just guiding and advising us on, um, you know, what, what, in season um, farm products we should be considering um, both to stock at our farm stand and also to incorporate into the menu. Mm, mm. So. And like going back to how the idea came about for, for Rooted, uh, were there plans uh, before the pandemic hit uh, in, in opening this up, in, in changing out the, the, the cafe experience there? Because you've had a cafe at the armory for a while but this is like a, it, it, it seems like a, a wholesale transformation to, to something new. <laughs> yeah. You know, I should mention, since I already mentioned Jess um, Bloomer, who was our Somerville Winter Farmers Market Manager, she also really played a key role in, um, before her departure in, um, in helping me, um, you know, she really is the one with that had all the developed relationships with the farmers market vendors. Um, so, and, you know, she was also kind of our resident expert on these products. And, you know, so she really was extremely helpful. And um, then I've also been working with Shannon O'Malley, who is our cafe manager and Shannon has taken over, um, you know, a lot of the ordering and is working closely with the vendors and she's doing a great job um, as well. But, um, you know, I think, and I should say that I started in my role, I'm coming up only on a one year anniversary um, as the executive director at the Center for Arts at the Armory. So I'm also um, new to the position. Um, and, you know, in talking with the, um, the staff and my board and, um, and the community, I think, you know, what really drew people to the cafe were the events. And, you know, the food was was decent. It was good. It was, you know, sandwiches and um, great baked goods. By I should also um, mention um, Michelle Coimbra, who is our assistant cafe manager. She's an incredible baker. Um, her biscuits are now on our rooted menu, breakfast biscuits, and they are delicious. And so she's very talented. We're very lucky to have her. Um, have her with us. But, you know, in talking, you know, we also with my, my colleague, um, Joe Botch, you know, we said, wow, we really like, how do we rebrand the cafe? So even before COVID, we were talking about like, how do we give the cafe in and of itself, you know, its own identity? And like, is it just a place for people to come? And, you know, the events are great, people really love them. But, you know, trying to bring more traffic in, you know, during the day when we didn't have events. So I think that conversation was already kind of afoot. And, um, you know, had some ideas. And then once COVID hit, it just really seemed like the perfect opportunity to say like, okay, we don't have events here. How do we, um, you know, how do we bring people through the door? You know, we have to offer something that people are going to want, you know, and how do we continue to, to serve the community? And, you know, I think, you know, in some ways it, it is our creative pivot. You know, that's like the the buzzword. I think it's already passe. I think everybody's kind of <laughs> tired of talking about their pivots, but this is definitely ours. Um, but in some ways, it really does relate to um, our uh, 
one part of our mission, um, which is very much connected to supporting um, the cre what I would say the creative economy and small businesses. Um, for folks that know the Armory, we have dozens of markets um, throughout the year. And so these are for um, creatives, artists, um, small business owners, um, food vendors. Um, and so th they you know, rely on these markets for um, as an important source of, of income. And so that is a big part of what we do. And you know, although we're not able to you know, do events um, in the main hall and you know, make the space available in that way, I think we are really serving our mission in terms of um, you know, really pr promoting the, the creative economy and, and small businesses. So yeah. I, feel, I feel happy that we can, we can at least do that. And what are what are you hearing from some of the vendors? I, I'm looking at a, a at a list here, and you could certainly mention uh, others that I I don't. Uh, vendors such as Dino's Pasta, which is the East Summer oh, yeah. staple, um, and Koshari Mama uh, uh, coffee drinks um, that are available from uh, oh pa pastries by Piping Plover um, and candy from Sweet Lydia's, Red Fire Farm. So what are these, what are these vendors, uh, what's the reception been like from them? Um, it's been I imagine awesome. they were excited. Yeah, okay. it's been awesome. I mean, I think for them, it's like one more platform where their products or produce can be sold, you know? And so especially right now in, in this economy, that's, it's really critical. Um, and in a way, because the, the farmer's market is a place where the, the surrounding community is accustomed to coming for those products. Like we already knew that we had really a built-in audience and, and market because you know we know that this community appreciates and buys those products. So um, so it sort of it made it made sense and um, yeah I mean they're they're really thrilled. I mean I you know there's smaller vendors, larger vendors. I mean Dino's pasta is definitely one of the larger but they, I mean, people are loving like coming into Rooted and they can pick up like, um, you know, frozen um, fresh, or what, no, sorry, frozen um, main lobster uh, ravioli, um, or I think it's called agnolotti. Um, so all you have to do is boil water and pop it in and it's like delicious. We also s sell their frozen sauces. Um, so dinner is, is ready. Um, then you can also pick up your provisions for a salad. We even sell olive oil and balsamic vinegar. So, you know, it's dinner is pretty much made easy. Um, but yeah, I mean, and we're just getting a feel for kind of the flow and like how much we need to be stocking, um, you know, but for example, piping plow over um, Aaron, who owns um, Piping Clover. I mean, I've seen her. I think she's she he keeps um, coming in like with new batches of her brownies and her cookies because we're selling out so quickly. So um, that's so good I think it's a, yeah, it's a good, <laughs> it's definitely a good problem to have. So we're trying to get a feel for you know what the um, the demand and the flow is, and so that we know um, what to order. But and it's a great sign too because we're now we're getting contacted by other. Um, local vendors who are not yet in our at rooted but um they would like to be so that's a good sign that they're like looking yeah. for um you know looking for those outlets and um you know the, that product placement so um so it's good and how does um how does it inform or does it inform your your plans uh, for the winter's farmers market um, or is that too far down the road at this point? Yeah, um, <laughs> that's a trickier question. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we're trying to figure that out. Um, but, uh, you know, I think we will be able to carry it out, but it, it's possible that we might have to use the parking lot. Um, so we're, we're working on that. And actually this person that we just hired um, that I mentioned is Jess's replacement. Um, she will be really the key person in, you know, in working with me to figure out what exactly, um, how that's going to take shape because we very much want to have the winter's farmer's market. It is, there are some New England farmers markets, winter farmers markets that do take place outside. I know that's hard to believe, but I think with the proper planning and you know potentially proper um, equipment, it is doable. So that I think that would be a potential backup plan. So 
yeah, we'll, we're working on that. Great, great. And um, what uh, what's next for, for the Armory? Or is there anything else that you, that you would like to, to plug or uh, just any information that people should know about, about what's uh, going on with the Center for the Arts at the Armory? As, as, as you know, um, arts organizations have taken a, a hit with, uh, with this pandemic. Um, and as well as small businesses and restaurants and, and other industries. Um, so um, in light of that, you know, what, what sort of, um, what would you like to share with, with viewers and of this video about uh, the particular um, need to, to support the Center for the Arts at the Armory? Yeah, well, thank you for that question. Um, and it's gonna be a, a multi-layered uh, response for sure. I think um, with Rooted, I think I mentioned, like we really need to double the amount of business that we're doing right now. I mean, things are good, but we, in order to allow Rooted to um, support our the operational costs of our nonprofit organization, if that's what's gonna carry us, we need to double um, the business that we're doing. So, um, you know, I'm trying to, really work with staff and do marketing and do outreach, see about possibilities for catering. Um, the online ordering was a big step for us. That's something that, you know, we'd never done before and we got that up and, and running. So um, I do want to ask for the community's support, um, you know, in terms of if you have a choice to get your, you know, coffee or your, um, if your coffee, your groceries, your, your takeout, please consider coming to us. Um, and we'd also, we also, we sell beer and wine, I should mention that as well, um, because that's really what's gonna be getting us through um, this, this period. Um, and frankly, if we don't, um, you know, if we don't kind of reach those revenue goals, we're gonna have to close. So, um, so that's, that's the situation that we're in. And, you know, like many um, arts organization, and especially um, performing arts organizations, uh, performing arts organizations um, across the country, this is just um, a really a perilous time. Um, we were the first to close and we will be the last to reopen. Um, and you know, I should mention that, you know, I'm part of a group of Somerville arts organizations and we, um, we do currently have a petition. We have a letter to the mayor and to the city councilors um, asking for support of our sector um, because there hasn't been, uh, there's been, I would say, very minimal support from the city um, to date for the arts and cultural sector. Um, so we have close to 500 signatures on that and we have a series of, of requests. Um, and the first one is really about some sort of relief funding for arts and cultural organizations that is scaled to the need of, of each organization. Um, so, you know, that's something that the city of Boston was able to offer to um, arts organizations through CARES money. And we are asking the city of Somerville to do something similar or to also look at um, next year's budget and see what can be done there. Um, the city of, of Cambridge recently announced um, that, you know, that they would be um, allocating additional funds um, for arts organizations um, in the upcoming fiscal year. So, um, you know, there's, we're doing our best to create um, new revenue opportunities. I was able to, through Rooted, I was able to bring back almost all of our staff. But in order to keep this moving, um, you know, one, we need, um, we need more income through, through Rooted, but we also need, um, support from um, the city, state, and, and federal support. Um, you know, so let's see what, what happens. Um, we're doing our best to advocate for that. Um, we, we also are doing um, fundraising, you know, the community, fundraising is something new, kind of new for the Center for Arts at the Armory and something that, um, you know, I've been focused on. Um, 
so we had a relief campaign once earlier on when COVID hit um, and through the generosity of the community, we were able to raise about $25,000. And then we had um, a virtual gala recently um, on J July 30th. And that was a success. We didn't quite meet our goal. Um, we had a goal of $50,000. We raised about like $22,000. So we're still in active um, fundraising mode and um, one thing that we're looking to to offer now is for local businesses that might be interested in being a sponsor at Rooted, because what, something that we started through the um, through the gala is we offered like um, basically your name can be on a donor wall at Rooted. So. Um, we're going to continue this now and start pitching to local businesses to say like, hey, you know, do you want to be a, um, you know, a, a rooted sponsor and have your your name on the wall. So if there's any local business owners out there that um, are interested in that um, and in supporting us, um, please feel free to contact me. Um, you know, my email is um, on the the website and um, and we just really appreciate the support. Yeah, I appreciate. Yeah, I appreciate the your your frankness in saying you know essentially if. If this doesn't work, we may need to close. And unfortunately, um, that's that's the situation that a lot of arts organizations uh, uh, find themselves in, uh, ourselves included. Uh, you know, the, the Somerville Media Center is is right alongside there with with all of the challenges that um, other arts organizations in in the city uh, and the state and the nation uh, are, are experiencing right now. Because yeah, no, it's true. I mean, I think in, in every sector, it's really about um, reimagining things in a new and different way. Um, and, you know, so that's what that's what Rooted is certainly all about. And then let's let's see where it leads. Yeah. Um, so w what are the hours at Rooted? We are open um, Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 6 p.m. And then Saturday we open at 9 a.m. and then close at 6 p.m. And then Sunday 10 to 4. So Wow, so seven days a week. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. So no excuse for anybody who, uh, you know, wants to get out there you're open seven days a week <laughs> yeah, we are open we are open for again call us up order online come in you know come into rooted and place your order you know while you're waiting if you want to um, peruse what's available in the marketplace um, you can can do that and then enjoy um, our outdoor seating we have umbrellas up so it's nice and shady and um, you know grassy area with um, tables and chairs so um, yeah we're just looking forward to seeing the community come out and um, and serving everybody yeah it, it sounds uh, as the weather is getting uh, less hot and uh, <laughs> we're acclimating ourselves more to uh, the classic New England fall weather uh, you know what better way than taking a walk down to um, the Highland Ave and going to the Armory and paying a visit to Rooted, getting something great to eat and, and sitting there in your, in your patio. Um, yeah, it sounds fantastic. Uh, I, I, wanna, I wanna thank you for, for coming on the show and, and talking about this with me. Um, Stephanie Scherf, the Executive Director of the Center for the Arts at the Armory. Thank you so much, Dave. I really appreciate the opportunity and I wish you all the best. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>